right, so we're back on the subject of Krakow's upcoming mayoral race. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Today we have, uh, as our guest here in the studio, we have a candidate for mayor of Krakow. Bala T. Fulton is joining us to talk about uh, the situation, the political situation here, what it looks like uh, in the race and what it feels like to be a candidate. Uh, Vala, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for the invitation. Hello, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you on Sunday afternoon. Beautiful day today, huh? Beautiful day. All right. First question. Uh, it seems like a really difficult job. No matter what you do, everybody hates you. Why would you want to be the mayor of the city? Because I feel I'm a queen and I think this town belongs to me. So I think I should be on the highest position. And um, you know, I, have to say, I was not expecting that as an answer. <laughs> <laughs> and also Krakow is the city of kings. You have, city to, of Krulu, kings. So you, exactly. you have to compete there as well. Exactly. All right, so wait, wait, you, you should be mayor because you're a queen. Of course, in my blood, there is a queen's blood. On the other side, you know, I believe that we are in a, in a, in a massive change, in a global massive change of politics, of gender roles, and also the feminist movement globally is really taking over. And I really feel this is the highest time for all those people who are privileged on privileged positions to step down and give back the power to those people who were silenced, marginalized and discriminated over hundreds of years. So the voice now should be given to those who are down. You know, everything you say might be true, but... You know, for a lot of people here in Krakow, the voters, they would say, okay, you know, maybe, maybe you have a point. That's a you know, discussion worth having. But we are concerned about smog. We're concerned about traffic. We're concerned about development of the city. We're concerned about, I don't know, infrastructure. What do you have to say to those people? Sure. I have written a lot on my website. Um, I have written a lot about all these things that you have been uh, talking about. You know, I'm very well educated. I, I have graduated from the University of uh, Krakow uh, from Anthropology of Culture. I've been also studying uh, cultural studies. I've been trained as a dancer. I've been studying in Israel, in Denmark, in San Francisco. My resources of knowledge are really huge. Uh, I come from a working class. I come from working class family. My parents were working their ass really hard in order for me and my sister to become uh, students. At some point um, in my life, I had to take a decision and become independent. Of course, my identity is really complicated and very controversial as well as for my family. So oh, we're going to get to that. Don't worry, we're going to get to that soon. Yeah. So at some point, I, you know, with the, all my education, I have decided that this is the time where I can use my education, my knowledge and my wisdom for these elections, because I know a lot about gentrification. I've been gentrified myself, you know, by the investor. I know a lot about ecology. I am an ecological activist. I've been defending the Białowieża forest last year. I've been on the gay parades, not only in Krakow, all over the world. I am also very much involved in a new radical Jewish life being established in this city. You know, I've been connecting many cultures, generations uh, in this city over last years. And this has been always invisible because I was hiding in the avant-garde scene because I didn't want to be visible. But at this point of my life, I want to be the most visible person in this world. Let's clarify something I, I mentioned in the introduction. You're a candidate for mayor. And I, in a sense, you are, but technically speaking, it's, it's a little more complicated than that. Can you explain to everybody listening what the current technical legal situation is regarding your candidacy? Of course, um, this is a very complicated procedure. Um, in order to register yourself, you have to have a committee that will basically choose a person to become a candidate. And I have done it. Thanks, thanks to God and all the saints, you know, I made this um, in August with a bunch of my friends and people who support me. We have made a committee and then we selected me to become the candidate. Unfortunately, the next step is much more complicated because you have to find people in your committee or in your community that will be running for the city hall, um, Radni. I don't know how it is in English. City council, something like that? Yes. 
So you have to find those people <laughs> that will decide to be uh, the voice of people. Which means, uh, for me, as an independent candidate, without political party, without uh, background in finances, because I have no capital, I only have debts at this moment of my life. This was impossible in one week time to find nine candidates and then to find 1,000 votes in order to register, um, to basically move forward with this procedure. At this point, when I have decided that this is impossible mission for this time, because I'm losing a lot of money, I'm losing a lot of nerves, and I cannot convince, I cannot force people to become part of the city hall, because everyone is so tired of fighting, of being activists, of being unpaid artists, you know? People just want peace. They don't want to go to politics. Nevertheless, they know much more than politicians. Do you think the system makes it difficult for independent candidates like yourself to, to meet that high standard, you know, without the financial resources, the human, you know, the, the, the human resources, the team? Is it really hard to get to the point where you can be a real candidate in the final round? Exactly. This is very, very difficult procedure. And this is, the, this is all exactly what power is. Power is money. And if you want to get to the position of power, you have to spend a lot of money to get there. Because otherwise, people, those people with authorities, they will not listen to you. If you are dressing up uh, with poor clothing and you go on the political debate, nobody will listen to you. If you don't have a nice car, uh, you will not be taken seriously in a, in a shopping mall. If you... Um, if you don't really speak uh, many languages, you will not be able to be in the European Parliament. And in order to speak languages, you have to pay for your education. So for this, you need money. And if you really want to have all this uh, support in politics, you really need money. And this is what other candidate has, uh, Mr. Gibowski, who got 50 million zlotych from his father. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. which is amazing. It's amazing to be... Life is easy when you have 50 million zlotys from yes. your dad, right? Yeah. And I truly believe in his, you know, um, he has amazing committee who supports him and they are really good in uh, copy-pasting my website. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, smoke pollution, talking about gentrification, you know, they are so... You know, on Friday night, they were so good, you know, he had papers in his hands. With, uh, with the copies of my website. So you were in another debate on Friday night? Huh? Yes. Okay, and they had copies of, from your website? I'm sure, you know, I mean, that's, that, that's the strategy. What does the huge corporation? They go to the hippies in San Francisco and all those creative people who have no money and they research what they do. That's how San Francisco became rich. That's how Silicon Valley... By stealing from the hippies? Of course. Right. This is what it is. Because the hippies, the witches, and the spiritual people are the most gifted and talented people in this world. And this is what's happening to me. My website has been for sure, you know, researched by all those people who are trying to get on the same position as me. Well, you can be proud of that. They're stealing from you, so you must exactly. be doing something right. Just make sure you, you send me donations. Let, let's go back... Let, <laughs> We'll, we'll put a link in the show notes to where the people can send a donation. Okay, let's bring it back to your policies. Let's just say, hypothetically, theoretically, you qualify for the final uh, election and you win. You win. Congratulations, Mayor Vala Fulton. Congratulations. It's your first day in office. What do you do? I do the same thing as every day. I wake up in the morning, I do my prayers, I put my makeup on, and I go to the office and I say hello to everyone. I shake their hands and I'm sure I know them by their names. And in the evening, I throw a huge party. You're going to throw a party on your first day in office. Exactly. I, I, throw I have a huge, to say, I think I, a lot of people in Krakow voters will be a little bit angry if after voting for you... The first thing you do is throw a party. That's, I don't know, might exactly, be, might you be know, problematic. Anger is fire and the fire <laughs> changes things. You know, that's not Simone what she was saying. I want to use this chance, you know, to give. And I'm sure it would be wonderful to throw a huge dinner party on the main square for all those people who are voting for me, for all those people who are homeless and starving, for all those people who are crossing the main square every day and maybe would love to really meet a... A president of the city 
and right. I'm there well, for I think them. Dave has a question for you. A more open model of uh, democracy. Uh, yeah. What I was going to ask you about is uh, the smog issue itself, uh, the specifics of uh, your positions on it, and maybe the content of some of those the blogs that you uh, refer to. Because I'm very interested to um, to get uh, the candidates' positions on on that issue, especially. Of course, I'm. Um, you know, I've been talking a lot about this air pollution. And I've been thinking a lot, how can we solve this problem? First of all, what I see, we have to reduce the car traffic in this city. We have to make sure that if you take a car, you're not driving it by yourself. So you're not creating a traffic. You're not creating lines of cars, you know, um, the alley are just packed every day. Are you and force people to carpool, to, to share a car? How this would be that? wonderful. This would be wonderful to say, on Monday, uh, we're going to have cars driving only with um, numbers ending 246, whatever. License plate. That's what they do in Paris. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then people have to self-organize themselves, you know? And this is what I think should be done. Self-organized community in order to protect ecology, to protect Mother Earth. Other thing, I would definitely would like to make a lane, a separated lane. If you have more than two people in a car, you can drive this lane. So this lane is like a bus lane, you know? Press lane. Kind of. kind of. So you are awarded if you are driving with two other people in a car. Another thing, I would definitely like to introduce um, hybrid cars. So we are not using gasoline. We are not using oil. We are maybe uh, searching for alternative modes of... Are you going to um, use government, government money for this? You're going to finance this? with? Of course. We taxes? should definitely use that money and also make a connection with huge companies who are very much interested in introducing new technology. You know, in the States, new, new car companies, they are actually giving you a car for a trial time to to just try out the car for one year. But you know, if the yeah. solutions are so obvious, why isn't somebody doing this already here in, in Krakow and Warsaw, somewhere in Poland? Why isn't somebody doing it now, if it's that simple? It's very simple, that's for sure. But this comes from living the life. Living the life every day means standing in the traffic, means standing in the line. And this is not an experience of all those people above. You know, they are they are not experiencing all this shit that we are talking about right now. So they are making all these deals with huge companies. You know, what was happening with the bike, rental bike company over years in Krakow? It was a mess. This was a mess. Of course, corruption was there, you know. Could I ask? So this is obvious. This is so obvious. Who should take the power? Average person who knows how to deal with everyday reality. Could I ask, would you support a scheme of um, writing off a tax, uh, making a tax deductible to convert your own dwelling to a cleaner source of energy like natural gas? I mean, uh, Dublin had a huge smog problem in the 80s and the way we overcame it was a mass conversion of domestic heating programs into using natural gas. Would that be something you'd be on board with? Basically what happens is you, you, you pay for your conversion, but everything you spent goes off your tax bill, you know, yeah. so uh, it could be... This is a nice solution for sure. And actually in Krakow, we already have a fund that actually helps you um, convert your um, current heating system. Unfortunately, those people who are heating up with coal are not so acquainted with all these grants, funds. They don't know how to fill up the online application because they are busy with everyday life. They are busy with putting their kids, you know, in the school bus and they are busy with paying the bills that maybe cost even more what they earn. Let's be honest about it. How much an average person in Kazimierz district five years ago was earning? 1,200 zlotych, you know, and now those people are thrown away from their homes because the tourism industry, the hotels, the Airbnbs are there. And what are other candidates talking about Airbnb? from Friday night. Oh, it's so nice to go to Portugal and rent an apartment with Airbnb. It's very, it's very nice. And I'm, and I'm saying, this is not the point, lady, because Airbnb destroys the local life. Can you please open your eyes 
and make sure that if you go on the website of Airbnb, those are the former homes of people. And those homes are now rented for tourists. You just think a lot of the politicians are just out of touch, generally. Totally. Totally, they are out of touch. Well, my other co-host that I forgot to introduce earlier, Mike, yes, hello, also, also has a question for you. Uh, well, actually, I just wanted to first say with the Airbnb, I have to agree that that's definitely a mixed bag. I live in a building where of the 30 so units, two thirds are now Airbnb and it makes living there somewhat awkward and unpleasant. Uh, and I definitely think that there should be some type of uh, work done to help make things better. Tax it. I wouldn't say taxing, but there there are definitely ways to discuss and debate and all uh, you know alternatives. But you were talking here about a lot of things that, as mayor or as the government, you know, to provide to help, you know. <laughs> but understanding, you know, being in a political position means that you have limited resources, and if you want to give something, that generally also means that something has to be taken away or limited. Do you see any programs in Krakow or anything going on that you think is a waste that needs to be limited, or something that maybe generally is positive? But say providing free public transportation would be more important, so we need to take something else away or limit something else. Are there certain things going on in Krakow that you think that people could live without, or there could be cutbacks introduced to help bring in other things that you believe are more important? Thank you for the question. Definitely. Just thinking of the whole project of the metro line. You know how much the project costs? 10 million slotif. Just for the project. Study. Yeah, we just, we you know, talk about the metro. So it's like against I'm it. against metro. Oh, good in for this, you. We're on the same team. For in this city, which... On the same team. Below our ground, below, below these, you know, streets, there is a massive heritage. You know, we should be investing in, for example, not the metro, but investing in a, in a for example, underground museum. Like in Paris, you have all these catacombs. Let's do that. And let's put the public transport on the ground, you know. And I also think the the current government, the, the political party, peace, you know, they have spent 30 million zlotych for the new transparent glass boxes for the elections. They are called uh, to urne. Be fair, those things are expensive. They Come are on. called urne, you know. You know what urna is? It's a coffin yeah. in English. Okay. So I say, guys, you probably have paid for your own coffins. Ouch. Because this is also so stupid to produce and pay for transparent uh, boxes for voting. Like, this is so insane. It's interesting you say about the, the underground. Wasn't that the case that um, they were actually digging under the Sukhanita to make an underground station that would have connected Galeria Krakowska when they discovered the uh, the new museum that's there now and they had to uh, change plans? Well, they, were, they were actually, Dave, they were, they were digging, but it was uh, as part of the renovation of the, uh, what do you call it, the Pritta, the, 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 the pavement of the, of the Rennick. It was during that renovation. But as Vala says, that's now a massive tourist attraction it is huge. and it is an asset to the city yep. and... You know, it, it's absolutely a fact that there is layers and layers of uh, medieval history uh, under our feet. Well, a big reason why your candidacy has attracted a lot of media attention is that you describe yourself, correct me if I'm wrong, as transgender. Now, could you, just for our listeners, could you clarify your sexual identity for us, please? Sure. Um, I define myself as a person, as a, uh, as a creature of this earth. Uh, but in terms of, um, you know, politics and identity politics, I call myself transgender. And also I call myself gender fluid person. This is also a very known thing, for example, from Native American culture. They had those people called two-spirited people. This means they were having female and male qualities. And very often those people were chosen to be shamans, healers, often even warriors. You know, in Balkans region, we had those women called Tobelia. And they were also um, transgender. They were women who were chosen to be boys, to be men, and to defend the family tribe. We also have five genders in Indonesia. We also have third gender in India, which was destroyed raped and criminalized by the British colony in the 50s, you know? So what... Do you, do you think you have a... Do you think you have a, a spirituality that people who are not transgender don't have? No, we, we are all spiritual beings. But I mean, what, what added dimension to your spirituality and kind of spiritual awareness do you gain by being transgender? Does that 
help you somehow a you know, different perspective on society and humanity that for example you know i'm not transgender so do you have a perspective that i don't have because i'm not transgender definitely i could say that i have a perspective of both of female and male um, i am a very flexible person but i've been also living for many many years um let's say in a cave I have been censored by the Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I have been censored by a lot of media. I have been even censored by my own friends and family. And when I came out and I said, fuck all this censorship, I am a being, no matter my gender, race, religion, I am just a being that deserves an attention. And I'm not afraid to say I am hungry for power. I am hungry for wealth. But you're saying you are hungry for power and you are, are hungry for wealth. Exactly. You're open about that. I am open for that because for many years, my family was unfortunately degraded from being uh, aristocrats to being a working class family because of the wartime, because of the communism time. At some point, all of us... All of those people who are intellectuals, artists, officers, at some point, because of the whole industry revolution, we had to become working class people and we had to make things, you know. And for many, you know, for many years, um, I never had money. I always had to do physical labor, cooking, you know, uh, working in agriculture, um, fruit picking and all this to pay for my education. What I want now, I want money in order to guarantee my grandsons, my granddaughters a better future. And I yeah, want but, but wait, well, how, how is know? being the mayor of Krakow a means to getting? Aren't, isn't that? Aren't you supposed to serve the public the as the mayor? Yeah. So how isn't is being mayor about enriching yourself personally? That seems kind of strange. Um. I also have to tell you something about my transgender identity. I am single. I have no family. I have no real estate. And that's why I can be a politician. Because my personal, li my personal life doesn't demand that time for family. So I can sacrifice my own time for politics, for other people. And <clears throat> why I'm saying I'm hungry for power? Because I believe, truly I believe that people like me should definitely have voice now. That's why we have the whole feminist revolution. We have to introduce a feminist agenda in the structures of power. And you know, some feminists are saying to me, Vala, you are hungry for power. This is actually, you know, kind of um, doing the same pattern of patriarchy. I'm saying no. I am conscious about that because I am sure if I get on the position of power, I will be having a perspective of working class people, of transgender people, of people who were censored, marginalized, raped, discrim dis discriminated for over generations, because this is my experience. This is my life experience. So I can, you know, I can definitely share that experience on the position of power. Let me ask you one more thing before I turn it over to Dave and Mike, because I know they have questions for you as well. Does being transgender make you a better political candidate because it gives you some kind of insight, like you just described, I guess? Or is it irrelevant and people shouldn't really, you know, consider it when they're thinking about you as a candidate? So in other words, is it really important or is it not important at all? You know, I dream of the world that we speak poetry, that the geopolitics are geopoetics. That well, I like that, geopoetics. Geopoetics, exactly. I dream of the world where gender has no meaning. We don't have to describe it. We don't have to define it on the identity card. We don't have to ask, what is your sexuality? Are you homo? Are you straight? Are you bi? This is all fake. Because in the heaven, there is no divisions. We are all equal. We are just beings. And this is what I dream of. But in order to make a progress on this world, you know, on this planet, in this country, where all these labels really matter and people define themselves in order to get some positions, I have also decided to make a very clear political statement 
Yes, I am transgender and I demand from my society and from my politicians to be treated equally. I demand from my politicians to have marriage rights. I demand from my politicians to have the same rights for um, partnership, for, um, you know, getting a heritage from my partner when he dies or when she dies. So for this, I really have to, you know, it's like a, it's like a very double thing. You know, in the spiritual world, there is no point to divide. But we live on this planet where all these labels, unfortunately, really matter. Uh, well, I kind of want to mention like the pink elephant in the room here. As you mentioned earlier, you won't be on the ballot in, uh, in, in a couple of weeks because you weren't able to fulfill those requirements. That means, you know, the platform and uh, all the attention you're getting right now, you can direct that towards another candidate or another group. And is, is there anybody you have in mind? And if so, why is this other candidate somebody that you want to back? And if it's somebody that you want to back, what else is wrong with that candidate that you didn't want to back them from the beginning and you decided to start uh, on your own road at first? There's like nine questions there. So Sorry. Just, <laughs> just take them one at a time if you want to. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I jumped on stage on Gazeta Wyborcza and I said, guys, I have a duty to say to my people where my votes will go. Because I, you know, nevertheless, I'm a small transgender, whatever drag queen. I have some support from the people. So I want to give my support to another person who luckily fulfilled all these procedures and is now you know running for for this um, in this battle and definitely um this person uh in my eyes is the best candidate for this position and this is daria gosek i read her beauty this woman really uh, daria, just to clarify she is from the uh, razem party correct or she was um chosen by the Razem party to be the, the, the candidate. This also means she is not really associated with the party. She's also independent, but she had to join certain structures, you know? So this misfortune wouldn't happen to her as it happened to me. She so, benefits from the organizational strength. Exactly. Of the she was smarter than I was. Well, the question is, well, because the Razen is basically, you know, creating itself to be a new political party. They want to show up on the left scene to, you know, displace SLD and other quasi leftist parties that, you know, used to exist here in Poland. My question is, as a continuation there is, you, because of the requirements to be in a centralized party, you were not able to actually uh, fulfill the requirements to be a, a candidate here. So you're jumping on with somebody who was connected to a party. But there are other parties and groups in Poland that have been trying to fight against this kind of like centralized party structure. Generally speaking, speaking more like libertarian centrist there a question right here, party. Mike? Uh, <laughs> now, I'm just asking, do you think it's a little weird that, you know, you're trying to run as an independent but at the same time, you're backing somebody who is joining an organization that's actually kind of been trying to be more centralized and more of a party structure instead of, say, joining other groups that like uh, cookies or, for instance, that are trying to go into a more independent coalition rather than a party. Mm, I, I hear you and I understand where your question comes from. But, you know, I will always be independent because I can afford it. You know, I have no family, as I said, I am single, you know, I am male by the end of the day. So I have European well, but, passport. But being independent means not being in the election, really. So Yes, but you, you know, I made my step. I made my step because I will not sell my soul to any party. But thinking of Daria, you know, she made this choice. I'm sure she has struggled with this decision. But in this reality, this was the best she could do because I don't want Majrowski, neither Wasserman to win because actually, those yeah, two candidates this. are the worst. But that's actually another question because let's be honest, in all likelihood, they will most likely be the choice that uh, uh, voters in Krakow will have during the second round of elections. Will you suggest to your voters, to your supporters, to support one or the other, or to just stay home if that were the case? Or what, what are you going to do then if those are the only two choices? 
please go and vote. You have to make this. Go out of your home and vote. But I will stay home for sure and I will do my magic. I will burn a lot of sage. I will pray a lot. <laughs> so the right person will get the votes. You do some magic for our podcast because we need a little bit of... Know, like, <laughs> of course. Burn so something, somebody hears this. <laughs> burn something for us and help us of out. Of course. So. I will help you out. Thanks. I'd like to finish by uh, by just asking about your... Uh, you know, I have a thing. We actually covered it on the show recently how boring political slogans usually are. And yours is actually quite good. You know, revolution is tenderness. And I wonder if you could just maybe give us the uh, ethos behind that. Of course, tenderness. You know, um, I really believe that that's what we need. We need being nice to each other. We need to be tender. We need to be soft. We have been fighting so much. We have done so much of self-defense. You know, we have created all these walls. And I really believe what we just need is just to cuddle. We just need to cuddle with each other. We need to be simply gentle. And I don't mind if someone has a different political agenda. I don't mind if he's black, white, yellow, red, green. But please, let me breathe in peace. Let me just be. Let me make love with who I want to make love. You know, even the Pope was saying that. We need to read again Saint Rita. We need to again come back to the idea of tenderness. You know, and if I would have enough money, I would go to this Pope and say, Hello Pope, I'm here to help you write this book about the revolution of tenderness. Because tenderness is a new revolution. And you know, feminists... It's a new revolution because the woman... Is it really that new? It's We've had already three or four waves of feminism. You know, you're talking rainbows and unicorns and puppies. These are all great ideas. And everybody always agrees that like children shouldn't die of cancer. Everybody should be happy. Nobody should be poor. But after a certain point, we need something more than just slogans that, you know, nobody can disagree with and sometimes difficult choices that need to be made. Uh, do you believe that you would have been able to make those kind of difficult choices in a political environment? And do you believe uh, that Razem's candidate will be able to make difficult choices? Because at the end of the day, we need politics because there are always options. There's always a choice to be made and we have to choose people to make those choices. Conflict. Do you think she Conflict can make resolution. those choices? Sure. I am hippie in my heart. I am a spiritual goddess in my heart, but I'm also very sharp. You know, I'm also, I can also be very angry. I can also make decisions because I was gifted with that. And, you know, what was the mistake of the hippie revolution in the 60s? First of all, it never arrived in Poland. Second. Man, you haven't seen photos of my dad in the 60s. <laughs> but this never arrived, I mean, in a public discourse, you know, I think this was what was the mistake. The hippies did not take the power. And I think this is what I'm doing now. And, you know, it was 1918. The peace of the world was supposed to become. But then the First World War, you know, came. Then 1968 was another holy date. Then 1986 was another holy date. And now it's 2018. There is Sorry, what was something... 86? Sorry, I think I missed it. What, what was in 1986? I don't know. There was also like a, a prediction in astrology and all this, you know, like, but then the Chernobyl thing uh -huh. just, you know, boomed. Okay. So there is something magical about number eight, but it's also something about how easily we forget in the time of 20, 25 years. If you just think of people in Krakow, how easily some of these nationalists are forgetting about what happened here in the Holocaust time, you know? So we constantly need to remind to each other, to new generations, things about peace, love, these basic things, you know? Last question and we'll let you go. Um, I think the, the 
mayoral term has been changed from four years to five years this time. So the, whoever wins this time is in for five years. You didn't make it this time. Will you be back in five years to try again? I will be back for sure. I will be back for sure. If not in this town, I will be back for sure in Brussels because I will be running for um, becoming um, a candidate, yes, for for European Parliament. Well, Assuming can, there's no poll exit because that's what everybody talks yeah. about nowadays. You can go home and if you can burn enough, uh, <laughs> if you can burn enough sage and incense for us at home and give some good luck on the podcast here, we'll be around in five years too and you can come back in five years and Tell us about your candidacy then, right? Vala Fulton, thanks very much for joining us. And, uh, well, good luck to you. Thanks so much, Vala. Thank you so much. Be great. Good luck. Mm-hmm.